All right, test, test. Here we go. It's the closing ceremonies for DEF CON 30, where we'll give you the seat, but you'll only need the edge. I tried. Okay. Um, we get everything going here. We got our slides up. And I'm going to welcome you to the final session of DEF CON 30 Homecoming. Thank you for sticking around, everybody. Give yourself some applause. This is one of the uh, this is one of the only times you'll, I really can enjoy drinking a beer because normally when I do something bad happens, and then I'm not totally functional, and so then bad things happen. But now, what bad thing could happen at closing ceremonies? Like, <laughs> it's it's gonna be fine. I'll be fine. Okay, here we go. Next slide. Look at that. I want to uh, I want to call out uh, Sleestack for designing that logo. We were having a brainstorming session, and I woke up the next day, and that sort of just came to him. And it was just such a brilliant summation. All the other ideas were like, okay, that's it. That's the logo, and it just came together really well. It's awesome. But before we get going. Every year I like to really call out uh, and have us just take a moment of silence for all the hackers that came before, the people's shoulders we've been standing on or are standing on, and uh, we'll just be, be quiet for a minute, think about all your friends you've lost, and, uh, and then we'll really kick this thing off. So just a moment of silence, please. Yeah, it was a pretty tough year, but um, coming in the escalator here, when I saw all of you, just like the buzzing energy, I felt like there was this invisible weight that was lifted from my shoulders. It was invisible in the sense that I didn't know it was still there. I thought I'd sort of unburden myself throughout the year, but no. When I saw everybody, it was awesome. And so by show of hands, did anybody else feel the same way or am I just freakish? Yeah. Yeah, it was just this really cathartic, like, here are my people and this is awesome. Another thing that was sort of awesome is, um, <laughs> is this guy. <laughs> and it kind of really reminded me of the bees for those of us that got trapped at the hotel on the last day when the bees were swarming by the pool. Yeah. And so, uh, so you have now experienced some extra DEF CON mystery lore and uh, you are free to retell the storm to whatever biblical proportion you want. <laughs> and that was what made, us, made this one really memorable. Um, okay, so for uh, homecoming theme, um, I want to call out uh, 30 years of history and um, there are some people that are still been engaged with DEF CON as goons or in support or still around that attended the very first DEF CON. And this year uh, at 30, there's two people we could identify that were at the very first DEF CON. And so I want to have a call out, a shout out to the dead addict. Yeah. And I want to have a call out to the prophet who has been doing the Telefreak challenge. So if you're in the room, prophet. Now we've got something a little special right now. If I could ask all the red shirt goons to stand. Everybody, all the red shirt goons stand, please. We're also going to recognize and give a 33-0 year goon patch for all those contributions of gooning over the years to stealth. You didn't know this was coming, did you? Thank you. Thank you. Wow. This is 
a one of a kind 30 year goon patch. You have been to every single DEF CON you could physically get a visa for. <laughs> the countries that won't let you in, then sorry. Uh, I don't want to go there. <laughs> okay. So why do you keep doing it, man? <laughs> I, keep ask, I keep asking myself that question every year. <laughs> but uh, I think the answer is that uh, it's just such a great community and getting involved when I didn't know any better, uh, I guess I've just kept being involved and I love helping people and being part of this conference and every year we get new challenges and somehow all the goons, they, they rise to the occasion and it's really just become a family. This is truly for me a family reunion with my fellow goons and, and all of you. Um, it's an exceptional experience. And uh, it's not a job, it's a lifestyle. I don't know how to do anything else. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, and uh, something we have never done before, uh, we figured we may as well start now, 30th anniversary. We have what I'm calling the Uber contributors uh, recognition. There's two people that we're recognizing as Uber contributors. And on my right, hidden underneath this flag, are the Uber Contributor Awards. So I'm going to go now, surprise you by revealing them. They are about five pounds of solid aluminum. So carry that on. Okay, so there are two people. Um, one is here, one was supposed to be here, and due to complications, they could not, which was sad. But here are the recipients. Lost Boy. Come on up. And I'll read the description aloud. You hold it up for me you see. <laughs> oh, so the uh, so if you can't, the, the inscription reads Lost Boy, the original puzzle master and spirit of inspiration. I think that's pretty accurate. All the work Ryan has done inspiring people, taught people the, uh, the way he's built the puzzles, the way he's included people and challenged us, really, I think, took uh, DEF CON to another level. Give us a I don't want to get emotional. <laughs> uh, but DEF CON represents many years of my life in trying to give to this community and to draw people together. So those of you who have been following my stuff, you know, my designs, everything I do is meant to make you interact, take care of each other. And that's all I would say is just don't be an ass. <laughs> I knew Ryan, I knew Lost Boy was a keeper when he had some hat on with electronics and wires sticking out of it. That's what I like. The second uh, Uber contributor award goes to Richard Theme, Neural Cowboy, who was uh, a first year speaker at the first Black Hat. And uh, I, uh, I've known Richard for a long time. And his inscription reads, seeker of a deeper meaning and explorer of the unknown. If you've ever listened to a Richard's theme talk, please tell me what it meant. <laughs> um, everybody that heard his talk came away with a different message. Um, and what he's trying to do is synthesize a lot of how do you know the unknown. 
and I think he forced us or encouraged us to think differently. Um, I couldn't always follow it, but I wanted to, man. I, it just, it always felt like Richard was channeling something into a place that I wanted to be, but I couldn't fully get there. And, uh, and that's unusual, especially for geeks where we think we're the masters of, of all the known. And because of that, I think he really helped our community uh, progress. And I'll be getting his uh, award to him. I'm going to leave it up here in case people want to take pictures of it later and everything. You get a closer view of what, what a, uh, an award looks like. But that's something new for DEF CON 30. And I really appreciate you uh, being along for the ride uh, and seeing that. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so by show of hands, how many people enjoyed the musical interactivity of the badges? Yeah. We've never done uh, a musical badge that I'm aware of. And so that was really nice and novel. And like all badges, we wanted them to be interactive. Um, and so to tell us a little bit of the story, um, I'm going to bring up MK Factor, the designers, Compu Mike, and Mike's. How do I say that? Mike's wife. Mike's wife. <laughs> Twitter handles. Come on up, MK Factor. Hi, this is not scary. Okay, so. <laughs> There's a lot of your beautiful faces. Like a lot more than last year. A lot more faces this year than last year. It's a little terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you to everyone who helped. We had tons of people helping assemble badges this year and get it all ready. Okay, so thank you to everyone that helped us. Um, yeah, we wanted a musical badge, something that would be fun for everyone to interact in a different way than you normally interact with the badge and with your fellow attendees. Um, I hope you got to do that. Um, we did have some crazy issues. For those of you who burned up the audio amplifiers on your badge, I am sorry. <laughs> um, we do have a workaround posted on Twitter, a couple little solder jumpers, and you can get audio working again. Um, anything you want to add? Um, I hope some of you found a new passion for some music, some that never tried it before. That was my hope. Um, now for our Uber badge. Um, I don't think we have a picture of it because that's no, our bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's kind of double sided. So we have one side. So this side is the back, technically. We have uh, the, oh my goodness, words are failing me so bad. The Jack. The Jack, thank you. Uh, he's in there and he's uh, glow in the dark. And then we have pieces falling, like there's debris of different components of things of, for circuit boards. Um, it also lights up. That's you. We're going to go with you now. Um, there it goes. Okay. Uh, and then the back side is a picture frame for homecoming. So you can put your homecoming picture in it. So. And then it also says uh, we have recorded Jeff's voice saying uh, DEF CON Uber badge. Let's see if we can get it to work. Please oh. work. <laughs> You're welcome. Ready, <laughs> you Congratulations. You're holding the DEF CON 30 Uber badge. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone for making this an awesome year. Thank you for putting up with us. <laughs> now we're going to talk a little bit about what happened from a transparency perspective. Um, for those of you who don't know, we uh, instituted a code of conduct uh, policy years ago and then a couple years later to try to hold ourselves accountable we started publishing a transparency report and the idea is that we have these standards and then we want to show you that we're actually following our own standards. Um, so there's sort of a, a loop there. It's not just one-sided. Um, and so where is CJ? CJ, CJ. 
There you go. Okay. So CJ is the number one of our SOC team, and so it is his responsibility to deliver to you the transparency report. CJ. It was an interesting year. Um, I was here last year, and it was probably one of the most mellow cons I've ever been to. And so I was expecting this to be a bit kind of crazier, and it was in some regards, but it was also still pretty mellow in a lot of regards. Like you walk down the corridor and people were greeting everyone like old friends. That was really cool to see. Um, that said, there was a lot of stuff that went on. I'd also like to say the transparency report is five years old today. We had 12 calls for medical assistance. Most of those were alcohol related. <laughs> and not me, I can't drink this here. <laughs> um, masking was probably the most challenging thing we had to deal with this year. It's pretty clear that people are tired of masking, uh, but we still need to do it to keep people safe. So that led to a lot of friction. Um, my team had to keep reminding people to do it. Some folks took a, took a offense to that and, and pushed back. Um, we ended up with three badges revoked, one individual who ended up banned from the conference, um, and what else was there? There was many requests to put masks on, and at least nine people decided to uh, leave the conference rather than wear a mask. <laughs> Members of the press, three press badges were revoked this year. This is why we can't have nice things. One member of the press was banned. And one news outlet was banned. Oh, you can say OAN. It was OAN. So, so Jeff just reminded me this was the only second news outlet we've ever had to ban. The first one was NBC. And I don't mind about how, Do any of you remember that? The Dateline reporter coming undercover and having to be chased out. That was fun times. It's still on YouTube. Hotline took 34 calls and 14 texts. Three paraprofessional consulting calls four code of conduct violations, three calls about masks, five accessibility concerns, and many, many calls about hotel registration. And, and I'd like to make it clear, we cannot book you rooms, cruises, or anything else. Code of conduct violations. So, we had a fair few of these, and it shows that we are... Here's the next slide with some oh. numbers. I can't read that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we had a number of uh, violations that led to, warning, led to warnings. We had one for verbal harassment. We had one for aggressive and threatening behavior. We had to remove two goons from staff for violating the code of conduct. And we had one person removed from, by the venue security for threatening behavior. Unfortunately, there was also a rise in sexual misconduct this year, uh, mostly offenses like harassment. This is, none of this is acceptable. And I wanna point out that we have a zero tolerance policy here. My team will find you.
and we will delete you. We had five cases of unwanted touching. Two of the perpetrators were tracked down with the assistance of Hotel, uh, who gave us access to CCTV and a lot of tracing. They were identified and they were permanently banned from the conference. A former attendee who had assaulted a, uh, another attendee at a previous con conference about two years ago was identified before con and was also banned permanently. <laughs> I want to encourage everyone to reach out to us. Use our safety email address, send us reports. Reports give us the power to track these people down and remove them. And we were more effective this year because of reports and because of quick reporting than we have been in any other year. And I want to see that trend continue. <laughs> One last personal favor. I run an official, uh, unofficial check on how many people pick up COVID during the con. I did it last year. So if anyone tests positive or knows someone who tests positive, reach out to me, Twitter DM, whatever. You'll be anonymous. We just want to get a count because it tells us how well things are working and it helps us guide us for the next year. Thanks all. Next up, we're going to get an overview of what happened with the media. To let us know, I'm going to introduce Wednesday, Head of Press. Thanks, Jeff. So the first thing I want to know is uh, my team doesn't hate that reporters are here. Um, and I know that a lot of you also don't hate that reporters are here because your PR teams keep calling me. So this year we had over uh, 70 credentialed individuals. Uh, so those are people walking around with the green press badges. This is a smaller number than we had in the before times, um, but definitely a huge increase from the handful of reporters that we had last year. And what I think is significant to note this year is that nearly half of these individuals are what we consider non-traditional media, meaning they're, perhaps, they're not coming from a traditional news outlet. So we have a lot of really talented people in our community who are contributing content through blogs, YouTube channels, podcasts, and all of these individuals are welcome to request press badges from our team. Um, and those, and I'm really excited to see that there is more of those um, requesting um, badges from our team um, and continuing to report and create content from the con uh, and give back directly to the community. So if you didn't request one this year, but you fall into that camp, please consider requesting it next year. We're actually going to start creating some new programs and opportunities um, to give you even more access um, and behind the scenes um, information and, and experiences uh, because we love when people from the community are the ones that are reporting back to the community. Okay, Jeff thinks this is interesting, so I'm going to share it. <laughs> <laughs> so one, one of the things that, that I want to note is it's actually been more than a decade, like even predating me, since we have deliberately invited reporters to DEF CON. I have never extended a single invitation to a reporter to come to DEF CON. They just come anyways. Um, but in the early days of DEF CON, when we were small and hacking was less mainstream, the press team did put a lot of effort into inviting media into the community um, and to help make sure that we were really addressing 
uh, inaccuracies, misperceptions, and confusion about hack what hacking was in general, as well as the DEF CON community. And over time, the function of our team has really shifted away from proactive PR efforts and more about issues management. So that transparency report, which I love that we're doing it, it creates a lot of work for my team. <laughs> Uh, because you know, one of the we get a lot of questions about it, and those are the types of questions that we like to get uh, because we like to push the organization to be even more transparent um, and to share more information with all of you. Um, I have been a reputation management expert for a very, very long time, uh, and secrets are very expensive to keep. So I love to see the transparency that um, that DefCon has been. Um, Increasing over the last couple of years, I'm thrilled that our transparency report, as CJ said, is now five years old. Um, it is really difficult for organizations this big to be that open, and it's something that I'm really proud of, and I commend uh, CJ and his team and um, Dark Tangent and everyone for actually really pushing that forward. I also want to note we had a special contingency of journalists from the Norwegian Institute of Journalism this year. Uh, this is particularly uh, exciting for me because they were invited by a member of our community who has been working with them over uh, several months. Um, got them all together, worked with my team to get them registered with the proper credentials, and then took them around the con uh, and introduced them to all the different villages and helped them understand what's happening uh, within the community. And so that, those are the types of things that we're going to try to integrate more for next year so that there's more opportunity to do education with press. Um, so you're they're not walking around with a scarlet letter um, with their badge, but are actually being invited by the community to learn about what we're doing. The more hacking and other cybersecurity issues become more mainstream, it's really important that we're not just educating press, but through educating press, we're actually educating consumers, right, and end users of all these technologies. So it's important to us that we welcome the reporters who come and follow our rules. Um, as CJ mentioned, there are a couple that, that didn't. Um, they will not be uh, allowed back. But we only have one rule for the media that attend here, and that is that they have to respect the privacy of our attendees. That means advanced and explicit consent before taking a photo or video of everyone. That's a very simple policy to follow in theory. It's difficult for news outlets because they like to get video of everybody's faces. But I'm really, really proud and really appreciate that most reporters have really not just accepted and honored this, but really adapted the way that they work in order to demonstrate respect for our community and for all of you. That being said, it is increasingly difficult for my team to enforce that policy when we don't treat each other with the same respect. So when you are taking photos and videos and sharing them online and on social media, please be mindful of the fact that if you don't want a news outlet to do that to you, consider not doing it to your neighbor and your fellow con attendees. And so as, as CJ mentioned, we did have a couple of um, badges that were revoked. Um, we did have to uh, ban an outlet. Um, and I do want to mention that the NBC ban from a couple of years ago was actually because they were filming in the casino. I told you during the DEF CON 101 panel, don't fuck with the hotel or the casino. <laughs> when you get escorted out by casino security, there is nothing I can do to get your badge back. So we now have, we're up to two outlets that are, you know, outlet-wide bands. Um, and then, you know, a couple of folks that couldn't follow the rules and maybe next year uh, we will consider giving them a second chance. Um, but before I cl close, I want to thank everyone who is helping to educate their corporate PR and marketing teams about what DEF CON is and what DEF CON isn't and how to engage with us appropriately. I sincerely appreciate the improvement that I have seen in village sponsors who are participating to support our community instead of exploiting it. So, thank you.
Riverside, Riverside. Calling on Riverside. You better get up on better get up on stage. Okay. DevOps is the group that runs our Discord, and the number one of DevOps is Riverside. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Riverside. Um, I'm going to go through some of the stats and talk a little bit about the uh, the Discord and as well as all the other activities that the uh, the DevOps team has been doing. So we've kind of grew out of a necessity to keep the community around the world together and keep everything flowing um, when when all things were shut down and make sure that we had a thing and the thing just keeps growing. And what we ended up turning into was a team helping automate things and build things, put it, putting together Kanban boards and writing code and helping the back end team that, you know, Kotman and those folks to, to make the DEF CON infrastructure better, more stable, more smooth and automate as much as we possibly can. And so these are some of the stats that we threw together on uh, the Discord specifically, but I'll talk about a couple other things. So this year I'm knocking on the podium. I mean, it's been kind of crazy, but we had no downtime, which was awesome. Um, and I noticed um, lots and lots and lots of people on Discord during con asking each other where they're going, where the parties are, what's going on. How many of you use Discord during the con by a raise of hand? Whoa. Wow. That's, that's impressive. So it's, it's going <laughs> it's pretty going solid. solid. Um, so, so this year um, I'm going to actually switch down to the bottom line. Um, we had um, 15,000 plus lines of code and because of the way that the community works and Discord and all the automation, we actually changed 40% of the entire code base this year. So the team is not just a weekend warrior team. This team works year round to try to make things happen. And so they did over 6,000 lines of new code to make things better for all of you. Um, three new bots created. Um, we have almost 500 Discord channels. We still break records on the amount of Discord channels and a lot of other things. I mean, we have insane amounts of stuff going on. There were 55,000 messages sent in just core channels, not all the stuff between all of you. We we tax the the hell out of the you know the things that we have, but it you know they're they're holding up. They're they've been a great partner to us uh, on making this happen and keeping the community together. Um, 77% of the members on the Discord have been there for more than a year. So it's not just fake accounts jumping on and doing a thing. These are real people, part of the community that have been doing this and, and connecting. Every weekend I see people on there, on the chat, talking and, and hanging out from around the world. It's pretty awesome. Um, all the files sent, we do, you know, virus scans and all the things that, that happen above and beyond the Discord. So I think they're safe, maybe? Eh? <laughs> um, and then, yeah. okay. Um, Thirty-three percent of the people that were on there for, were from outside of the U.S., and that was the way that the folks from outside of the U.S. were able to participate this year. Thirty-three percent of those, and so the, all the international con uh, contestants for the competitions were going through Discord, and they really sent a lot of notes thanking us for making sure that happened. Uh, three issues warning. Uh, were issued, or three warnings were issued, no bans this year, which is amazing. Uh, here are some, some stats you guys can look at later. And then right here, uh, we helped out the, uh, the Black Badge raffle. So if you notice getting disqualified from the Black Badge raffle, that was through there. And then I'd like my, uh, my DevOps team to stand, if you wouldn't mind. Woo! And the, the packet hacking village folks that, st that spent all the time testing all the bots and doing all the stuff. This is Fox over here with the red hat. She's the second who's been an absolute rock star on all this stuff. Um, I want to just thank you personally for all, everything. And with that, thank you. All right, keeping us connected in a brand new facility with new infrastructure. The number one, Louise. Effin, come to stage. Tell us what happened with our packets. Where did our packets go? To the cloud.
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Afin. I'm here with Mac, number two for the knock. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened. Uh, before I start, and I can barely see you, but how many people use the Wi Fi network here? Quite a lot. Um, how many new people? What, how many people is their, their first DEF CON? That's excellent. Well, welcome. It's about the same. Okay. Um, we like this new place. Thank you, Jeff. New place good. Yes, new place good. And we still like Guy Fieri, and we like it even more because it's so close to Flavor Town now. So, so I'll turn it over to Mac. Mac is going to walk you through what took us to get you here, to get everything working. So, Mac. So, like a lot of oh, thank you. Uh, a lot of teams, you know, work throughout the year to get stuff going. Uh, we get to be one of the teams that gets on site a little bit early to get some stuff here. So for the last couple of months, we've actually been bringing up gear to leave in the, the forum space uh, to be ready such that it's not such the kind of frantic uh, scope that we see as we get here. So that's been for the last few weeks, or uh, last few months. Um, once we get here, there's a little bit of shoring up what's there and then kind of go drop in. We start on Monday and we are just running everything that needs to be there. We set up access points, we do any patching, we do last minute requests as it goes through the week. Um, and then, you know, kind of goes a little bit more with more last minute requests. And then to be quite honest, and don't tell Jeff this, but we did nothing like Friday and Saturday, which <laughs> is a first. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so the rest of it has been today is our teardown and then of course we're supporting the trainings uh, tomorrow and Tuesday and the last of our team is out of here on Wednesday. Um, and that really is one of those things where it's like, you know, it's still amazing that we were able to enjoy ourselves. Uh, just to give you a high level layout, um, you know, in this particular case, it largely is a, a star network. We come down from the internet, uh, distribute to each of the sites. The link is a little bit of a satellite site to the forum. Uh, and then we just kind of put all the edge switches down and then access points below all of that. Um, giving an idea of the scope of the gear. Uh, there were three firewalls in that picture, four distribution or core switches, 21 edge switches, hence the re or politely known as four Prius cargo loads of edge switches. <laughs> um, some unmanaged switches, uh, cloud monitoring infrastructure, the Wi-Fi reg server for uh, wifi reg.defcon.org, uh, support the media server, uh, and then a lot of it, which is what a lot of people see, is the Aruba infrastructure. We used a total of four controllers uh, between our gear and uh, Encore's gears, the, the one of our partners here at Forum. Uh, we have 45 of our own access points and then up in the sky there's 318 access points which is, space is big, it needs it. So, um, We support everyone that we can. Uh, even odd requests that come in, last minute requests, you know who you are. Uh, we try to do everything that we can for them. Uh, if we can't, it's usually because we're limited by some physical capability, and even then we try to try to break through them. So thanks to everyone who helped out and worked with that. Uh, and now for the victory parts. Thank you, Mac. So just going through the numbers, not going to go through everything. The slide, slides are going to be posted on knock.defcon.org. Uh, you can download them uh, in about a week and a half. Um, and, but we use more traffic than before, which is expected and great. And I put DC27 there because that's when we had a lot of people here, right? So we use a couple more, uh, we transfer a, a couple more terabytes of data for you guys uh, throughout this year. Uh, what else is interesting? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Eight, over 8,000 different number of uh, devices on wireless. Um, provided some of the new 
uh, phones and whatnot, they do some MAC address randomization and stuff like that. So the number might be a little skewed, but let's go with that. There's no way to track that. Challenges? Uh, we had none. <laughs> Again, first time ever. Other than Mac driving here three or four times to bring gear and all that stuff, right? That's it. He likes driving, so what not? Uh, but yeah, no major problems this year. That was good. What is new that we implemented this year? We finally have a new ticketing system that we track the requests that we get from the different teams. Um, we were testing some services to the internet, continuous monitoring, not monitoring, but testing, just to make sure that all this, not all, but most of the stuff that you all use is uh, accessible, and also make sure that our stuff here, DNS, DHCP, and all that good jazz uh, doesn't get broken. Uh, one of the goon, the networking goons uh, installed Enzyme, uh, probably you guys know this better than I do, um, to do some monitoring. We just did close to the knock and we saw some stats. There is a slide with data uh, that I'm not going to go through. And there, was an, there is an ESSID for WPA3, but WPA3 is fully supported on Linux and Android, but we had over 400 devices using that. So really cool. Pictures, pictures, pictures. And I want to thank the NOC team. Uh, they put a lot of work here and a little bit before. Thanks to Mac for what he does. And I want to also thank our families for allowing us to be here for over a week sometime. So a round of applause for them. Last but not the least, I want to thank everybody who's on this slide, DT, Nikita, um, Janet, all the department leads for being super helpful and understanding with us, uh, providing what we need. QM, Caesars, Caesars IT and Caesars SOC, um, Encore, without them we cannot do what we do either. And all the goons here, they're super helpful with us. They try to help when anyone has any questions about anything, they try to help before coming talk to us or their department leads. Um, and Guy Fieri and you. Thank you. So uh, by show of hands, how many people stayed within the hotel block, all the hotels that we tried to promote? Okay, of those people, who watched DEF CON TV in your TV? Awesome. Okay. The people that bring you all the streaming both on the interwebs and in your hotel room, the DCT net, uh, DCTV network, getting up so you don't have to, <laughs> Video Man, number one, come on up. Tell us what happened. And Morgan, number two. Thanks, Jeff. All right, so how many people uh, actually watched on Twitch? Show of hands. Oh, a few people. Okay. Well, basically our infrastructure is pretty big. We, we, we also get here the Sunday before and we deploy out to the seven different properties. We deploy to 28 different channels in the hotels, um, 20,000 hotel rooms, which I guess is significant. So if you want to watch the talks in your room and not have to worry about internet, uh, book in one of those hotels. That would be my suggestion. Uh, we also have six Twitch channels that we put out live uh, channels on every, every year now going forward. Um, we also did a stream for DEF CON China because none of the folks from China could actually come to our event, which <laughs> kind of sucks. Uh, and then we also have, new to this year, a 360 camera in this room that's actually uh, blinded off because we want, we have privacy concerns, you know. Um, so it's like a 180. Yeah, so it's like a 180. We, we tried to find a 180 camera. We could not find a 180 camera. They're all like 96 degrees or 60 degrees. Anyway, so we have a 360 camera. We had uh, it 
it's set up in black and white ball where everybody's, you know, the lights are low, it's up high, it's dark, P people are wearing masks. You're not going to see people's faces at that point. Uh, for our Twitch stats, we had 26,000 unique viewers, which is pretty good, right? Um, we have 15,000 followers between all of our channels, and apparently Hacker Jeopardy was the most popular program. Yeah. 400 and 422 people uh, at one time, which was a, a, a pretty good number for all of our streams for that week. So we have a number of volunteers. We have video men, myself, uh, but also Sandwich, Squeak, Ghost Pepper, Eagle One, and Robin's BS. Yeah, so w without all of these volunteers being here this whole week, this wouldn't happen. It's, it's, a, it's a huge team effort to deploy this hardware into all the head ends, get all the infrastructure up and running. We also have a couple of uh, streaming servers that we set up and support on the back end. We have the website on the front end. I mean, it's a whole effort. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, supply chain getting the gear. Like, this has been a, a heck of a year to get anything. I tried to get switches multiple times this year. I finally got two, right? I don't know if anybody else is having this problem, but it's a pain in the butt. Uh, and then we, uh, we actually were able to order the 360 cam, which was amazing, but I think that's because they're not in demand. <laughs> and they're so expensive, right? Um, shout outs to the DEF CON knock. Because if we didn't have a knock, there would be no network for us to stream this stuff to you. Uh, shout out to Caesars IT. Um, Phil and his crew, Harry, uh, got us into all the property head ends. Without them, uh, I don't know that we would have had anything up on Friday. So thanks to them. Uh, and also, shout out to QM. Uh, I, I forgot to put him on the slide, but QM stores a pallet of our gear at the end of the year and gets it to us on time on Sunday so that we can set up and get going on Monday morning. So, And, and we did our best, so thank you very much. Okay, so trying to coordinate all this it's like herding cats and we have so many channels and different ways to push out the information. There's, uh, and just from the DEF CON side, there's independent groups that on their own effort try to aggregate all the data, all the things that are happening. The villages, the contests and events, they're constantly making changes to their schedule and we're trying to update that to coordinate it all and try to have a single point of contact for when things change is the info booth. So, info booth, come on down. Hello, I'm Little Bruiser. I'm the department head of info booth. How many people came and visited one of our locations at least once and did not ask where the restroom is? <laughs> Because this year, I think, is the first year where that wasn't the number one question. The number one question was, where do we get our tickets? Where, where's registration? So that's a new one for us. Yeah. So with that, I would like to thank uh, DT, Janet, Nikita, Will, Neil, the rest of the HQ staff, because without you guys, we wouldn't be here, and we really appreciate you. So thank you. I'd also like to thank all my info goons because this year we ran thin. We really needed more people on our team, but we made it happen. So thank you guys. Appreciate you all. <laughs> How many of you use the Hacker Tracker app? <laughs> right here is our, our team lead, uh, Locke. 
advice, and an all-value. And I'm going to turn it over to Locke to share some stats with you. So, I'm, I, yeah, I'm the team lead. I do the iOS version. Advice does the Android version. And a new value does all the data wrangling. So if you like the app, tell me. If you don't like it, tell advice. But please, please be nice to a null value because he's the reason that it all comes together. Um, yeah, so much, so much work that goes into this. Uh, there was a, just over 1,000 total events with 871 speakers across all the villages and talks that were official, 126 major changes within the last week uh, uh, leading up to the con and during the con. We had a peak of about 17,000 daily users on Saturday, average about 12,000 a day, and 12K app installs. This was the year that iOS overtook Android, so yay for iOS. Uh, we've done that as soon as that. O only by about 400 installs, but you know we're going to keep that up. Um, 450 million data reads out of the app itself, of which there was a, about 480,000 bookmarked events. So, thank you all for installing it. Um, we're trying to make it better. So, feedback at de or hacker tracker at defcon.org. If you have anything that you would like to see in the app, we want to know. We want to make it better. It's for you. So, thank you. With that, we'll turn it back over to you, Jeff. Okay, so speakers, speaker control. The core content of DEF CON has always been our speakers. And as DEF CON evolved over the years, villages, contests, and events grew. But we spend an inordinate amount of time reviewing call for papers. We're one of the first conferences that I know of in the hacking space where if you are rejected as a speaker and you ask for feedback, we give you the feedback. <laughs> you might not like the feedback, but we try to uh, constructively give the feedback. <laughs> this takes a lot of time um, from the speaking coordination team, but it's interesting on Twitter, you hear, see people who are very uh, depressed that they were not selected, and then they say, but you know what? the feedback was actually more valuable. So if you're involved in a CFP program somewhere, really consider trying to provide that feedback because it's one of the only ways the speakers can evolve and grow. So with that said, I'd like to introduce PW Crack, head of the CFP speaker control. Yeah. I am not PW Crack. Uh, I am Pasties. I'm giving uh, the speaker operations uh, slides uh, today. Uh, so, uh, hello, DEF CON. Uh, in uh, DEF CON 26, we started collecting uh, qualitative metrics about uh, the talks that were given on all of our main stages. These were uh, very simple metrics. I think we have five or six. Um, they were all rated on a scale of one to five. There was no comments or anything like that. It was just a uh, simple set of metrics to see how uh, the speakers are doing, uh, if there was any technical difficulties, which uh, there had been quite a few uh, in the past. Um, and uh, <laughs> we're in a new space uh, this year. Uh, historically, whenever we got to a new Caesar property, uh, there was a learning experience between speaker operations and uh, the local staff. Uh, there was weird issues with the stages and stuff like that. Uh, this is the first time we've had a transition to a new space where there was no issues. There was no technical issues. This was also the first time that we actually didn't lose any time due to technical difficulties. The only time that we actually lost uh, was because DT here was double booked for one of the tracks. Uh, so he couldn't get do both at the same time. He had to jump between the two and give the intros. Uh, so we lost about 15 minutes total, uh, and it was uh, not something that we could have accounted for. <laughs> um, a few more quick stats that I'd like to explicitly call out. 71% um, of our speakers this year were brand new to DEF CON. They were first time speakers. <laughs> So, 
Uh, of all of our talks that we gave, uh, 95 or 94%, sorry, had a uh, internal rating of, of four or five. Four is already exceeding expectations. Five is they went way above and beyond. So 94%, according to our internal metrics, were just fantastic talks. They met all the requirements. They asked everything that, or they gave everything that they gave in their abstract and a little bit beyond. Uh, every, talk, uh, every talk successfully delivered their abstract. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I've got. A, a, I want to especially call out that the CFP board uh, did a fantastic job in selecting uh, our speakers, uh, and with the number of new speakers, like I want to encourage you all, if you have a great talk idea, submit it. Uh, you will get that feedback, like DT mentions, uh, and at the very least, uh, at the very least, uh, and if not, um, then you'll get the feedback uh, to improve yourself and become like an interesting speaker, and maybe eventually join our alumni of speakers. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd all like to uh, do a quick uh, thank you. Um, we can't do what we do in speaker operations without uh, the sock goons. Uh, they control the room, we control the stage. Uh, they make sure that you guys are getting in and out on time, that you guys have seats. Uh, they're very important to how we operate and they've done a fantastic job this year. Uh, I'd also like to thank Encore, our, a our conference AV team, uh, and of course, uh, all of speaker operations. Uh, they do a fantastic job. They always crush it. They show up ev early every morning. Uh, they deal with my weird requests, uh, and uh, they just crush it every year. Uh, so thank you, DEF CON. Uh, thank you, speaker operations. Thank you, NUC, and uh, thank you, Encore. Grifter, you're going to just have to keep waiting. Okay. Let's talk about workshops. We dedicated one whole hotel property to just workshops. And the idea there was if you're doing workshops, you go to one place. We don't split it amongst. And so the capacity, the number of workshops that we could hold was based on the physical space of the hotel. So let's bring up head of workshops. Megan. Megan. I know I changed my handle and it's like, what do I call her? Oh, yeah, I thought, like, what do I call her? Hi, everyone. Who was able to attend a workshop this year? How many of you attempted to sign up for a workshop this year? <laughs> so this year, we had three days of workshops between Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And we sold 2,330 2, seats out in 24 minutes, or 24 hours, sorry. Oh, so yeah, we do an Eventbrite um, pre-sale every year, right after the 4th of July holiday in the US, so that way we can, first of all, gauge interest in a specific topic, as well as try to control the number of folks who actually show up. So if we didn't do pre-reg, we've had instances where we started getting side or sideway glances from the fire marshal <laughs> because there was such a great interest in these workshops. So this year we had 28 workshops compared to 20 workshops last year. And a lot of these workshop instructors were brand new instructors. Um, our workshops are four hours in length. So that can be really intimidating for a lot of folks who have never taught a class for that long, but they did great. We had no issues. The attendees were uh, really interested and engaged. Most of our classes stayed full the entire time. So um, if you have any interest in giving a workshop, we opened up our CFP the same time as the main stage. And we try to give you guys as much feedback as possible if it gets rejected, uh, what you guys can do better, where you might want to submit it in the villages. And we try to share content that way. So please share as much information as possible. Uh, we don't have trend data yet, so for everyone who did attend a workshop, we did send out a, a Google form link, so that way you could provide us with information about what you thought of the instruction, what you thought of the goons, so that way we can incorporate that with the CFP review process with the board, as well as uh, improve the experience for you all as well. So please uh, do not hesitate to give us feedback. You can also just email workshops at defcon.org, and we would be... Uh, more than happy to receive any feedback or questions that you have for us. Thank you.
Okay, well, well, not technically. I'm, I see this next slide coming up. Training. Um, well, not technically a DEF CON event. We're trying something new this year. It's a more uh, commercial paid training Monday and Tuesday. So some of you are going to give it a go. Um, and so the idea here is that from workshops, there were some people that just wanted more in-depth training. They didn't want four hours. They wanted eight or 16 hours. And this is something we've never done. It's been 30 years. We've never done uh, trainings, paid trainings. And we looked around and everybody's doing trainings. Like, why aren't we doing trainings? So we're going to try it. We're trying it on Monday and Tuesday, see what happens. Um, and so I just want to call this out because workshops are not trainings and trainings are not workshops. They're just different. And this is a new thing we're doing. So to prevent confusion, I just wanted to call that out. Now, Rock and the Beats is arts and entertainment. And if you saw this new space, they worked really hard to try to create a more immersive sort of environment so you know you're at DEF CON. So by show of hands, who either listened to Soma FM, went to the black and white balls, or who just enjoyed the energy of the music we produced? <laughs> right on. Yeah, so um, the number one of arts and entertainment, uh, Chris A.M., unfortunately could not be here. So the number two is taking over. And I'm told it's either DJ Dead or Clink. Okay. Come on down. Ooh. Hi. Move that mic. Check. One, two. Um, my name's Andy, uh, also known as Zeeks. I'm a 22-year veteran. 22 years. It's been a long time, man. Um, let's see. I'm the tech technical director for uh, Arts and Entertainment, and uh, I'm currently the, uh, the lead for our department in uh, Chris's absence. Let's see, the department, uh, we're, a, we're a pretty tight group, and uh, yeah, we went through a lot this year. <laughs> we, uh, we had over seven crates of, uh, of new stuff that came in, and that was a nightmare. <laughs> we uh, we showed up Monday morning and it was it was intense. Uh, with Chris's absence, uh, I took control. We got through all that gear and we got it out to you guys. And uh, man, that was tough. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> we uh, we also booked a new group, uh, the Tyco group, which was really cool. Um, they were an amazing group of uh, Tyco players uh, all the way from the far world of Los Angeles. <laughs> and uh, they were uh, fantastic to work with. A uh, funny story when, with them, though, uh, when we uh, uh, booked them, we were trying to figure out a way to chest, test the structural integrity of this building because as though, uh, <clears throat> those, excuse me, those that remember DEF CON 29 when Miss Jackalope was playing, uh, the, hi, where are you? Stand up, stand up, there you are. When she was playing, she literally brought the ceiling down. So we were discussing how we were going to see if these chandeliers were gonna fall. And uh, so we were trying to figure out, oh, do we play metal, do we play, you know, what do we play? Bass house, you know, more drum and bass. We just get nothing but drum and bass out there. Um, no, we figured, why don't we do something cultural? And we figured out that the Tycho group would have been a great, you know, just giant ass drums, just it'd be awesome. So we booked them, and that was amazing. Um, and, and my phone's gonna die. That's wonderful. Well, fuck it, I'll wing it. Um, <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Fuck it. Um, Yes, we have the, uh, the, uh, uh, the original uh, soundtrack. Uh, Dead, where are you? Are you here? That's DJ Dead. He did your original soundtrack. Props to him. Um, how many people have done the, uh, uh, have listened to the soundtrack or downloaded it? We got a lot out there. Oh man, you, you, everybody else, seriously, download it. It's, it's the bomb. Like, <laughs> I'm constantly listening to it. Um, Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we, we have media.defcon.org. Uh, we also have our, 
we also have our, uh, our own channel, which is defconmusic.org, which is where you can see the latest info that we had. Um, we were having a real hard time with getting our, our tweets and whatnot out to you guys, so we decided, hey, you know what, let's just start our own website and you know, bring all that information to, together for you guys. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Miss Jackal. My phone came back. Yay! Oh, one story. One story that was really cool. That just kind of brings together the whole community that I want to share. I was cleaning up the party that was at the top of the escalators the other night. And it was just me, middle of the fucking night, because that's when us entertainment people work. And loading all the stuff up, and I see a laptop. And this laptop is sitting on, you know, right next to these plants, plugged in, I'm like, oh man, somebody left their laptop, this sucks. So I grab the laptop, take it in, since I'm a goon, I kind of keep it with me in my possession, put it in my lockup. I go back down the next morning to the chill out, and there's this guy in a panic, absolute panic. Oh my God, where the hell's my laptop? Where's my laptop? And he approaches me, says, hey, I'm missing a laptop. I grill him on it first off. I'm like, what does it look like? What kind of stickers on it? Because it's DEF CON, you have stickers on your laptop. <laughs> and then finally, can you get into this and legit show me that this is your, pa your, your, put your passcode in there and tell me that it's yours. And sure enough, he did all that. And it was really cool, like he got his laptop back. So, you know, kind of a dull story, but it got me thinking, none of you assholes took that laptop. None of you assholes cracked that laptop. You guys deserve a round of applause for yourself for not taking somebody else's property. That thing, that laptop sat there for hours. So Jonathan, if you're in here, if at all, or you're watching me on TV, um, don't leave your shit around DEF CON, because somebody may take it. And of course, I uh, just want to thank everybody in the crew, um, Chonez, my audio engineer, first year um, with our department, did a phenomenal job. Dude, you're coming back. Um, we had a ton of help from you guys when it came to pushing boxes, when it came to unwrapping those goddamn fucking ninja swords. Oh my God. <laughs> those things were... So it was a good idea. It was a good idea. And there, yeah. Anybody have a sword in here? Turn it on, please. There we go. I hate that fucking sound. <laughs> I hate it so much. I am so sorry. Um, yeah, uh, again, thank you to absolutely everyone that showed up. Thank you to everyone that helped. And if you are in the entertainment field, like me, um, we need help. We are growing. We have got a metric shit ton of equipment that we want to help distribute to parties. You know, your event, we love loaning our stuff out so that we get it back. And you guys have a good party. The, the, the emphasis is getting it back. Um, and uh, so, yes, please feel free to reach out to anybody from the uh, arts, and entertainment, arts and entertainment department. Use all the words there. Um, and... Uh, and contact us. We'd love to have you on our crew. So, thank you. I've now switched away from the central nervous system depressants and I'm now working on the central nervous system stimulants. I got, yeah, I've got all my bases covered. Oh wait, you, you forgot your music viewing statistics. Okay, here we go. Look at these statistics. <laughs> They're very beautiful. And now we're talking about the parties. Parties. Come on down, Bert. This is scarier than it was last year. <laughs> I got this, I got this. Every year the DEF CON community comes together to party and meet in the desert. A&E had the black and white ball this year, but we also give the community space to create their own parties 
and to give you all something special and exciting. Show of hands, who here went to one or more of the amazing parties at night? Woo! Yes! Excellent. Alongside that, we provided a place for people to come together from various DC groups and special interests. The meetups are run by you all, by the humans, and we love seeing the community come together under one roof and provide that space where you can talk about those things that are interesting to you or just this is where the DC group comes together once a year to say hi in DEF CON. Thank you so much for all the parties and meetups. On a more serious note, the last couple of months I've been having a rough time mentally and none of this would have been possible without the help from all the amazing people in my life. I especially want to thank my friend Nikita for keeping me level headed and picking up my slack when I had no spoons left. More importantly, all the hard work she puts in to make the parties and meetups happen. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you Nikita. Thank you all so much for coming out and making DEF CON Homecoming a huge success. Much love to you all and have a great, great time for the rest of your time in Vegas. Thank you. It's okay. We're all secure in our identities. Okay, so something new again this year. Um, and I don't know why. This is the thing, right? We've been doing this for so long and then a new idea pops up and you're like, why didn't we do this like 20 years ago? I don't know. And the idea this year is that we've got Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and people are running around recording everything and we try to watch it all and see what's going on. We never really created a team or tried very hard um, beyond PhotoCore. PhotoCore is taking static photos of what's going on to try to capture and we'd use it in a slideshow or we'd put it online to create some images that people could use later. But we've never really done it with video. And we've never really tried besides say DEF CON 20 to try to really in a more organized way record what's happening in all these villages and contests. Like how does that thing actually work? What is the actual Hackasat contest about? And this year for 30 because well we wanted to do another DEF CON documentary for 30. That was the plan. But the plan ran into COVID. <laughs> Boo. The I, yeah. So the, the group we were going to use to do the recording kind of exploded. It was too last minute to get replacement. So instead we figured we went to the community, we found people that have experience with DEF CON and with doing video and we got them going and they've done a ton of interviews. I think we're up to 47 or maybe 50 little videos on everything. And so they're being released on YouTube. Um, on different creators' channels. We're going to eventually edit them all together and sort of create a best of DEF CON 30. And so that was great. We're going to keep doing that because what we found is a lot of the villages don't have time to capture what it is that they're doing and we want to promote all the awesome work that the creators are doing. And so I think in the future this is just going to be a service where we just help them spread the word of the awesome creativity that they have. So another new thing for this year, we're calling it the video team, but you might have seen them. They're running around. They've got video cameras. They're scheduling with the contests and events. And if you go to YouTube, I think already we have about 20 or 20 or 30 of these videos um, listed. Um, so please take a look at something new that you might not be aware of. We have some shout outs to Silk, uh, Gory, Shannon Snubs Morris. I cannot pronounce that. Ending with all Ali. Snares, Random Wear, Neon Temple, Legacy, Lower CVSE, and uh, Late to the Game, Naham Sec did some great work. And this is the capture crew this year that really, uh, first year thrown into the fire, really pulled it off. 
So thanks to them, we're going to have some really great memories of all the things behind the scenes that we didn't actually get to see because we were too busy. You can go back and visit what you missed. So thanks to the video team. Now, talking about all that fantastic content, I would like to introduce you, if you don't know him, Zant, the number one head of villages, and he's going to let us know what's going on. As always, I'm going to keep this nice and short because I hate these long talks. <laughs> <clears throat> number one, as always, Jeff, villages needs more space. We'll start, we'll get that one out of the way. All right. I would just like to thank my seconds, which was Honey, who actually ran everything that had to do with the Flamingo Hotel, and Fox, who ran everything that had to do with the Link Hotel, because I can't be in three places at once, and the rest of my team that's out there, they made everything work really smooth for me by helping to support all the villages. So I also want to thank all of the village leads that brought all their great content for you guys to enjoy. I ain't even going to bother asking how many people went to villages, because I saw... <laughs> um, other than that, I'd like to thank Jeff, Nikita, and everybody else for allowing us to keep bringing this stuff in for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, of course, we also, villages, would love to thank the NOC because without them, none of our villages would be able to do the stuff that they do. So I hope you all enjoyed them. Thank you very much. For some of you, um, this is a village that was created a number of years ago, Data Duplication Village. Where are you, Data Duplication Village? Come on up. Um, we give away free data to attendees and we're hoping to continue to do it in the future. That's a big crowd. So how many of you know of the Data Duplication Village by show of hands? Oh, cool. Excellent. How, have you know, how many of you know of Infocon.org? Uh, he's providing all of that source for us. That's where that's all coming from. Uh, so the Data Duplication Village has been around for about, oh, seven years now, and we've been putting together uh, all the Infocon.org to the drive to bring out to us. And uh, this year we were over in Flamingo, uh, kind of over the river and through the woods, so to speak. Um, but despite being so far away, uh, you guys still, you miscreants, uh, still found uh, 427 drives to turn into us. Uh, so thank you for bringing those to us. That's about 80% of our normal capacity. Um, 108 of those drives, Jeff, you were asking this, are uh, over 8 terabytes in size. So we're probably going to be making some adjustments to the data next year. Uh, 420 of them, uh, putting that together, came up to about 2.5 petabytes worth of data in just the con time. Uh, started off with just three drives that were handed off and multiplied out to all those drives for us. Uh, we had about 20 drives fail. Most of those we got to be successful, got to work again. Uh, we're finding that drives are starting to age, so get some new drives. After about five years, you're going to need to get your drives updated. Uh, big thanks out to uh, DT, Nikita, Will, Ira, uh, Zant, of course, Honey, the QM stores. Uh, all you guys, all the goons, and of course, uh, you guys, the humans, all hackers, thanks for coming out and, uh, and getting those drives in and getting that data out. Um, do, if you would please, seed the planet. Get those things out there. Get infocon.org out there. The more seeds you have, the easier it is to get that data out there. Uh, stay tuned for those updates for next year. Thank you. How many of you were walking down the hallway and you saw those cool glass rooms with the demo labs inside? You weren't walking. <laughs> you were crawling. Um, so I don't know if you realize, but those, those rooms, those walls are like LED blackout walls and you can press a button and the walls go opaque, which is really cool. Um, so that, they probably got some of the coolest space we have at Con. And uh, running demo labs, where is head of demo labs? Heisenberg. Heisenberg. Okay, come on down, Heisenberg. Number one, um, we get a lot of submissions, and just like call for papers, we review uh, demo lab submissions. And to give you an overview of how that went and what we selected and how it went, Heisenberg, come on down.
Demo Labs is really a cool thing that DEF CON does, and I'm really stoked about it, and I hope you guys had a chance to participate. Demo Labs is an opportunity where we bring the InfoSec community together with the people that are doing the content, doing the development, doing the tools, doing the really cool projects, and we get an opportunity for you guys to interact in a close and, and highly, a highly interactive manner where presentations are given, but it's a lot of questions and answers. There's a lot of, of back and forth and talking. And the thing that really made it so cool for me this year is almost every demo lab that came up and did their presentation came up afterwards and said, I got great feedback from the community. A lot of people were saying really good suggestions. This is awesome. Could it do this? Could we go this direction? That sort of thing. And it was absolutely fantastic. So kudos to all of you who gave great feedback to Demo Labs and to the people that presented. As the slide says, we had 41 call for Demo Lab projects received. We picked 30 of them, just like a call for papers. We go through and look at them and screen them pretty carefully. And ended up 28 of them were presented in person and two of them were presented virtual. So if you think that you've got a really cool project that you want to actually get, maybe it's just now getting off the ground, maybe it's a pretty mature project where you're looking for direction and you really want InfoSec community feedback, Demo Labs is the place. I hope to see your call for papers next year. Thank you. Okay, Grifter. It's Grifter time. Contests and events. A large part of what happens at DEF CON and a large part of the shenanigans happen in contests and events. And leading that chaos is Grifter, also known as the dinosaur. <laughs> hey, um... I, I'm not nervous to see all of you. I missed you very, very much. Uh, thanks for coming out. This has been absolutely incredible. Uh, it was clear from this year that you were all really tired of being in your houses. Um, it says something that we all crawled out of our basements and ran, literally ran onto the contest floor. Um, as the doors opened every morning, um, people headed in every direction. It wasn't one contest that was driving that kind of excitement. There were people flying in every different direction and that's super cool to see. Um, we're seeing that on the contest floor, but we know that that's also happening in villages all around this space. So contests and events are, are also hosted in many of the villages. So thank you to Zant um, as well for the support around those um, contests and events that are, that are within his um, purview. So um, I would like to thank the, the contests and events goons, um, without whom none of these things would run. But um, I heard Bert say something about Nikita there where he said she picked up some of the slack for him. And I am also one of those slackers. Not that you were slacker, Bert, we got where you were going. But um, sometimes I would get a message from Nikita and she would just say, hey, I saw that this thing wasn't done, so I did it for you. And I'm like, dope. <laughs> like, and then she'd send me another message and be like, I made this document, I've arranged it this way, and I think that will be easier for to use because the one that you were using didn't look so nice. And I'm like, dope. <laughs> and that happened over and over and over again. So again, please, another round of applause for Nikita. One of my favorite people and, and the heart of DEF CON, if I can be so bold. Um, so a lot of different activities going on this year. Uh, a lot of new stuff and cool things that you were doing. Um, we're really, really excited um, to see the things that you create. Please, if you have ideas, send them to us. We want to see new things. We want to see what weird stuff you come up with. Um, but some of the best weird is what we're going to talk about next the black badges. So I think the, the best way to kick this off is um, 
is with the badge challenge itself. So not only uh, do the, the creators of the badge create the badge itself that gives you something to, to look at and play with and when a talk is boring you can tell because people are staring at their badge. Um, but Lost created a tradition where not only um, is the badge something you wear around your neck, but it's something that keeps you up at night. So uh, with that, the badge challenge. All right, so how many of you played the badge challenge? Yes. All right, so for those of you who didn't, um, there were some things you could unlock on the badge. We had a bunch of telephones set up in the contest area, and for those who played last year, we brought back Jenny. It was a big thing. <laughs> um, we had 12,771 phone calls made. Uh, 1,128 unique badges played the challenge, and 312 voicemails left for Jenny. We're still coming through that, but <laughs> it was awesome. Um, and real quick, I want to thank Redacted and his wife Boots. They helped a ton with the challenge and the hardware and getting that all set up and making it work. And then here's our winner. Thanks. Wow. Uh, this is incredible. So. Again, this was just an incredible, I mean, this is a piece of art, um, physically, literally. It, it, you can make music with it and you can have a lot of fun with it. I, I couldn't thank you guys enough. You did a great job. So please, once again, let's hear it for MK Factor and his team. That was awesome. Um, with the challenge this year, I, I have to say that uh, most of the credit's gonna have to go out to the community. This was a group effort. Um, big shout out to the family at the uh, DC30 Badge Hacking Discord. Uh, the Discord, the DEF CON Discord, uh, we documented almost everything. Um, we made all the answers available on uh, wiki pages. You can find links at those uh, uh, sub, sub Discord channels. And uh, while I'm still here, I'd like to do one more thing. Could I quickly ask everyone to just power on, right button, and let's see what thousands of these things sound like in unison. That's beautiful. Thank you all. <laughs> we also gave him a phone to keep from one of our phones of the many. <laughs> I handed it to him. Do you want me to put it on a presentation? Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Um, all right, this next one is uh, a favorite of mine. It's a favorite of yours, clearly, because there's a significant amount of space dedicated to this contest, and it's full all of the time. Um, I feel safe in saying with you bunch of weirdos in this room that I really, really like packets. Um, I like to look at them. They wash over me in waves. I could bathe in packets all day. And this contest takes that love and turns it against you. <laughs> um, it is a blast. As I talked to Riverside about this, uh, this year's contest, I just kept saying, that's, that's mean. That's mean. That's, that's also mean. And he was like, no, it's going to be great. And it was great. So let's hear about it. Capture the packet. Oh, careful. Okay. Thanks, Grifter. Um, you know, thanks, DEFCON, for letting us do this again. It's, uh, I think, the 11th year that it's been a black badge now, and uh, everybody just keeps coming. As he said, it's packed constantly. It's a threat hunting challenge, and we try to bring it really hard every year, and it changes and changes and changes based on all the threats that are happening around the world. Um, we've been adjusting to all the things that the nation states are doing, and we add our own extra special flavor of bullshit to the, to the thing to make it really hard for you at DEF CON, which is, uh, you know, important. Um, last year we, we turned the, the knob to, you know, close to 11 and people were like, ah, oh, too hard, don't do that. And so, you know, we, we were like, 
dialed it back, and then somebody in Maine's were like, ah, it, th we got all these things, and we're like, oh yeah, well, try this now. So in final, <laughs> yeah, we like rolled in some extra special stuff in finals, and and that ended up uh, out of the, I don't know, three or five thousand points or whatever, I don't know, the the winning team to the left of me who did awesome. Got 700 points, <laughs> and that's that's extremely good because we had prior year black badge winners goose egg this year. <laughs> so we we uh, you know we definitely need to uh, to you know figure out do we do we want to keep it this extremely hard or dial it back a little bit? What do you think? Super hard? Yeah. <laughs> All right, dial it back. All right, super hard it is. <laughs> All right. So I want to I want to thank the the many 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 people that helped make all you know the challenges and keep the the engines running and all the things and the folks in the packet hacking village that like made all the infrastructure dropped it down get everything together. Um, I mean there is no way that that event would be nearly as cool without the vibe going from the the DJs in there and all the things that were happening. Um, and then if you feel like checking it out and you want to try to get into the black badge, but you're like, I don't know. We have, we take prior year stuff and put it into Packet Detective so you can sit down and try the things out and kind of get a feel of what the stuff is and then go for it. Um, but this year, all the way from France, their first time at DEF CON, right? <laughs> Rolling in and dominating and taking a black badge, uh, Team Blero. Good job. Here we go, guys. Thank you All right. Thanks, Defcon. Make sure they get uh, in the registry. Yeah. yeah. Be careful if you're walking up here. If you fall, I will take your wallet. Um, <laughs> I, like, I say I love you guys. I keep. I always say I love all of you, and here's why. He just talked about how hard it was, and DefCon responded with "Hurt me, Daddy." <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the next contest up here, I, I went in and took a look at um, at what they were offering up for their CTF. And when you walk into the IoT village, you see um, a ridiculous array of devices stacked on top, literally on top of each other, shelf after shelf after shelf. And what you're looking at is the levels of difficulty of the CTF getting harder and harder, um, including you know, things from, from a standard IoT webcam all the way up to the emergency broadcast system, right? Like, so they bring it all and 48 different challenges and then continued to add more throughout the, the contest by sourcing them from other nerds <laughs> inside the IoT Village. So it just got crazier and crazier. So let's hear from them, the IoT Village CTF. So uh, I want to go back just a second, back to DEF CON 26, when myself, Huffy, and Noob won the black badge at the last time that the IoT CTF got a black badge. And I actually jumped on the mic for a second when I probably wasn't supposed to. And I said, I, I want to be thankful that for DEF CON and IoT Village. And we want to come back next year, make IoT Village bigger and better. And fast forward four years later, now we are the team that is helping build the IoT CTF. And uh, we, we tried to put together the biggest, baddest IoT CTF that DEF CON's ever seen. And I think we may have gone a little bit overboard. As, <laughs> as Gertrude said, we had over 50 challenges. Uh, but I think, that, I think that you guys all appreciated that. And uh, I'll ask you, do you want more, less? More. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, not only that, though, the one thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to help bridge the gap between players that are noobs and some of the badass players that compete in our CTF. So I wanted to give a shout out to Noob, who actually helped develop some of the labs that we do in IoT Village so that people can get intro to IoT. And I want to see all the people that did those labs come back next year and play in the IoT CTF. Uh, folks that are familiar with our contest right, might remember that we used to be called the So Hopelessly Broken CTF. But we dropped that name. We went just to IoT Village CTF because IoT is so much more than just Soho. Uh, so as Grifter said, we expanded the CTF to include things like the emergency alert broadcast systems. We have had an Inmarsat Glowcom satellite that was retired from the US Secret Service that we had in the CTF. As well as other things like Bluetooth low energy locks, firmware challenge, 
and we also wanted to introduce people to the hardware side of IoT. So we had a, a UART bootloader attack in the CTF. Uh, we had over 175 teams register, 70 teams solved at least one of the challenges in the CTF, and the competition was super close throughout the contest, with the top teams only separated by a couple of challenges. So in third place, we had 20,501 points. It was Leet the hard way, so congratulations to them. In second place, with 21,001 points, only, only a 500 point difference, was Colonel Panic. And the winners of the DEF CON IoT CTF with 25,501 points was Dark Wolf Fire. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so this next contest uh, has been around for many years. Uh, every year we'd see lines of folks outside of the contest area waiting to get in to get their hands on whatever the darknet folks had gotten up to this year. And they really like upped it this year with, to include as many people as humanly possible, right? And when I mentioned the running earlier, uh, they were way off in the back of the contest area. And so uh, getting geeks to run that far, it just speaks volumes, right? <laughs> Uh, the, literally creating traces out of foil themselves on the badges, tables covered in components, it was a hacker's dream. So we'll bring to the stage Darknet NG. you beautiful party people of DEF CON! So my name's Gator, I'm one of the operatives for the Darknet NG, and the Darknet is many things. We are in a person role-playing game, we're a contest accessible for, to beginners and challenging experts. We're one of the most prolific badge producers that make a bit of a thorn in the side of the contest goons every year. Sorry guys. One of the, let's see, so we are a year-round community of teachers and that helps encourage people to learn something new and have fun. This is our 11th year doing yet another highly successful year for Darknet in our homecoming, Gulo. He was our badge designer and he helped us get back to the basics. We went and gave away the perfect, the paper circuit boards, which hopefully you guys have seen a few around the conference. And we got a lot of folks getting in and tracing for the first time. So we had about 13 thousand, excuse me, 1,300 new unique electronic badges designed all in one year because you were designing them yourselves, which is awesome. We had over 200 players in our online CTF and with the final standings, in third place, we had at 640 points, Tupac, put a round of applause for that. In second place, at uh, 711 points, a remote player, not even here physically at DEF CON, is Crombo. <laughs> and our first place winner, second time coming to DEF CON, at 822 points, was Crooked Fingers, the Fellowship of the Token Ring. So I want to thank the operatives who slaved away to make this happen, including Gulo, Mansell, Digital Tinkerer, Oh Hi There, Pyre, Key, Colonel, Sanity, and Skyria. Thank you for the contest goons for helping us manage all those silly lines that we had across the entire contest floor on Friday morning. Thank all of you, all of the players, who they, you guys are the reason why we exist. We hope to see you online and see you come back next year. And DEF CON is our people, so go love your hacker family. All right, um, this next contest was new last year. 
Um, they came in, set up a village, put together a CTF, and when I sat down with the creator of the CTF, I was blown away. Like the amount of challenges and the ridiculous hoops that you had to jump through to solve them was uh, on the level of Lost himself, right? And so uh, they, they received a black badge last year, and then they looked at us this year and said, watch this, Blacks and Cyber CTF. Um, wow, they were not kidding when they said there was a lot of you. Hi guys, oh my gosh. Hey, um, wow. Well, I mean, a lot of things go through your mind when you're um, thinking about what you want to say in moments like this, but honestly, the only thing I can say um, would be our village slogan for this year, which if you were able to solve it was, love does not lose its way home. It's based on a Sankofa symbol out of West Africa. And love really doesn't lose its way home. Like, look at how many people are around us. We're just so excited to be able to showcase what our community can do within the hacker community. And we're so excited to do, again, do it again next year. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, let's talk about the CTF real quick though. How y'all doing? Yeah, I go by Daddy Coco, man. You can find me everywhere. Um, no, so we had about 41 teams registered for this event. It was pretty dope. Um, the, all the challenges were made by uh, us and hosted by the Georgia Cyber Warfare Range. So thanks to them for being able to host our infrastructure for us. Uh, they're a, a group of individuals in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, who host live fire, blue and red team exercises. So check them out if you are, if you are interested in that type of stuff. Um, we had 20 challenges and a total point possibility of 480. Uh, so we'll just announce our winners real quick. And they were very close. They were within one challenge of each other each. Uh, so in our third place, we had The Boar with 160 points. You make some noise for them. Yeah. Yeah. In second place, we had Urchin Sec 2 with 170 points. Yeah. And our first place winners are Collateral Damage with 174 points. It was pretty, pretty tight there. Yeah, really close, right? So um, thank you to all the players. Appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have some more new challenges for you next year. You're going to get them back? Yes. All right. Another long-running contest here with a newer name, but long-running. Uh, when we look at everything around us, uh, whether it should have it or not, it's got Wi-Fi in it. And so these guys chain all those things together and say, get after it, the radio frequency CTF. There it was. There it was. The Here's the back drop, door. Thank you. So hello, DEF CON 30. Back again this year, Radio Frequency Hackers Sanctuary presented the RF Village. We used to be the Wi-Fi Village about 15 years ago. Turned that into the Wireless Village, which then became the RF Village. Uh, thanks a lot, DT, Grifter, Zant, for the 15th year. I mean, it's just, we're so happy to just kind of keep doing this thing over and over and over again. Um, on top of the over 100 challenges ranging from DC to daylight, we were on site. Um, we had over 100 players on site. We had 40 players playing virtually. So we had people worldwide playing this time as well. Um, we really couldn't have done this without the RF Village team up here. Um, thank you so much, guys. You just every year just bring it like crazy. And our sponsors Pen2, Amazon, PI Achievers, Aruba, Weathered Security, Red Team Alliance, Hack5, Hacker Warehouse, and Wiggle. Wiggle has been absolutely amazing this year. Just give them quick props. They're 21 years old this year. They can drink, thank God. Yeah, Ark, yeah, Bob. Um, we had two awesome Wiggle war drives. Uh, worldwide war drive last week. 2.5 million new access points worldwide. This week, we did something a little different. We did the first ever indoor war walk. It was four square miles, 27 properties. And out of the 10 foxes that were hidden, seven of those 10 were found within 27 properties. All of the rooms were in play. Our rules were air conditioned, you were okay. If you were out in the heat, you were doing it wrong. 
Uh, and there goes my phone, yay. Um, Black Badge winners this year. Um, they've been fighting and fighting and fighting, finally got first place. What the freak? Good job, good job. Um, followed by a much smaller but powerful team called Team Blunderbuss, who I think is going to start to catch them soon. Again, thank you, DEF CON. We'll see you next year. All right, so um, the SE community uh, village put together, uh, you know, one, they faced an incredible challenge. They were coming in to fill some, some very large shoes, a lot of expectations on them, on what would it look like, what would it feel like, and, you know, for, for social engineering, right? And so a team stepped up, made up, uh, out of black badge winners from competitions in the past, uh, people who were lived in, in that village in the past as well. And they, if you went in there, you know that they met the challenge head on. It was incredible. We'll have them come up and tell you about their competition, the Vision competition. Hi everyone, I'm JC and I am proud to be joined by Snow. Together, I got a couple claps, but see if I can impress you in a second. We're the founders of the new social engineering community. I would like you to make some, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want you to make some noise first if you went to our village. All right, there's the turnout. You're the reason why we chose to build this and meet this task head on. This was a lot of work. If you came to the link, waited in those long lines, and listened to our calls, uh, our panels, our talks, we really truly hope you enjoyed it, found them both entertaining and valuable. This year we were excited to bring some new things with our village, including our cold calls. With our cold calls, we gave attendees opportunities to make a call. We gave them five minutes, three objectives, easy, medium, and hard, and one phone number. We placed that call. It was on the spot. No preparation. They were in there for experience. Nothing was judged. There was no scores. Pure experience. Raise your hand if you've made cold calls. Oh, yeah. Hang on. That was stupid. Let me hear you. I can't see anything. <laughs> we, we were able to make 35 calls with the time that we had. Hey. All right. So, it, okay. Cool. So we were really, really excited to bring back one of the competitions that everyone loved to watch, our vision competition. This year we had 16 teams come and compete. Every single one of them showed up, which was huge. A lot of them were brand new to DEF CON. They've never been here before. That takes a lot of guts. So we are proud to give our second place to Team Artie Boy. Round of applause. Thank you. Oh, I knew that. And then with us on stage is our first place team. So we have Jen, Sean, and Matt with Team Split Beans. And because we're new, we would love volunteers, people who want to be contestants, all these things. So please follow us on Twitter. We are SEC underscore DEF CON. And we also want to thank everyone from DEF CON who helped support us, all of the goons, right? Nikita, I love you. Thank you so much. Grifter, Dark Tangent, everyone for believing in us and showing up to the village. Thank you so much. All right, this, uh, this next competition uh, I hold near and dear to my heart. When this contest was started uh, years and years ago, it was started by Pinguino, and there was a lot of illegal stuff on the scavenger hunt list. <laughs> um, 
At one point, she couldn't uh, cover the, the hunt. She wasn't going to be able to make it to DEF CON, and she asked me if I would take it over. And I did with a group of uh, friends from Salt Lake City, what later became DC-801. Um, we ran the scavenger hunt for several years, uh, Penguino joining us uh, by our side, and we had an absolute blast. Over the years, we would hand it off and hand it off, and every year it got better and better and better. And if you saw the scavenger hunt, yeah, the statute of limitations, I'll tell you all kinds of weird stuff later. Um, but if you saw the scavenger hunt this year, you saw that they raise it to a level that I just, I don't even know if anybody else is ever going to uh, be able to, to beat. That's a challenge. Um, but I'll bring them to the stage to tell you about what they put these folks through, the scavenger hunt. What's up, nerds? Here's the badge. Okay, uh, here, hold my beer. Uh, all right. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'm Evil Mofo. I'm from the Scavenger Hunt, um, and uh, as Grifter said last year, we are always watching and always judging. Um, this year we had Balsa and Dual D and Zora and I were uh, judging this year, and um, this was our 25th year. Uh, as, as Grifter was saying, it was started by Penguino, and he took it over, and then Siviak took it over, and then Salem took it over, and I'm the one, and we're all making this happen. And if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be making DEF CON weird. Um, this year being so special, we invited all of our previous judges to come by if they had the time, and we want to thank every one of them that had the time to come and help us run the hunt. Um, so, as he said, you, you couldn't miss us. We, we're quite the spectacle in the contest room. Uh, if you didn't come in the contest room, you should make it a priority to do that next year. We are a spectacle not to be missed. Um, and this year we actually built a soda machine that was dispensing virtual machines for people to hack at DEF CON. Um, and so, let's see, uh, so this year, it was a heated contest between, uh, for second place and third place, with a total of five points between first, or second and third. In the end, Team Fuck Howard ended up in third place, Team Hooters came in second, and the first place team, who had two of their members fly to Italy last night, are What's With The Nails. So here you go, guys. You got yourself a black badge. Uh, if you're uninitiated, you should go to defconscaffhunt.org or defconscaffhunt.com. We own both of them. Um, and look up the history of the hunt and come play next year. Um, I say this every year, and it's true every year. They need no introduction. Capture the flag. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Thomas Windmill from the Nautilus Institute. Uh, one of our, our, our plans for the inaugural year of, the, uh, or of our Capture the Flag was a return to form to allow DEF CON CTF uh, to be weird and to allow more shenanigans to be in the game than we've seen in past years. Uh, shenanigans were had and our infrastructure greatly suffered. Uh, we are deeply appreciative of the grace and patience uh, that our team showed us as we worked through what in retrospect was the most predictable problem in the world. Um, one of the things that uh, DT has been asking for for quite some time is a way for CTF spectators to get a better understanding of the game and what exactly it is our players are doing. Um, in moving in that direction, we introduced a new part of our game this year, Live CTF. 
Thanks, Thomas. Uh, I'm really excited to be representing Live CTF that was, a be, was able to be a sub event this year during the finals to really showcase exactly how impressive all the teams are that participate. During the finals, we ran a 1v1 single elimination tournament between the best members of each team where any points or any wins gathered them points for the main event. Everyone did amazing. Even participating in such a nerve wracking environment is challenging. But congratulations to C2W2M2 from Team Starbucks for a first place finish and some amazing challenges and solves about throughout the way. Check it out on LiveCTF.com to see the videos of every match and all the scores and challenges as well. Um, so after all of this, I'm uh, proud to announce the results of this year's DEF CON Capture the Flag. In third place, we have Starbugs, the champions of the Live CTF. In second place, we have Katsuban, who were last year's DEF CON CTF champions. And in first place, we had the Maple Mallard Mal er, Magistrates. First time, so never talked in front of this many people. So, uh, thank you, Nautilus, for running the CTF. Um, as, lo as a long time CTF player, I know it's very challenging and requires a lot of sacrifice um, to run a CTF competition, especially when the world's best hackers are your audience. Um, and, congratulations to other teams as well that played and competed with us. Um, it was definitely challenging, but fun nonetheless. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all again next year. Thank you. All right. So there was a. a an accidental omission from the slide deck. And so I just want to call out that if you've noticed, all the different teams here uh, have different badge types, press, um, contests, events, villages, CFP review. And all of that coordination and handling all of those different badge types, checking them in, making sure the right people have the right kinds of badges, is a team called Inhuman Registration that handle all badge types besides human registration. And between the two, we distributed about 25,000 badges this year. Yeah. Next slide. Okay, here it comes. Are you ready to rumble? So. Um, some of you might remember the black badge raffle, which was a troll, which was then another troll, and then the next year another troll. But we were thinking DEF CON 30, maybe it's not a troll. <laughs> and to tell you the story, come on up. It's not quite a troll, but it might be a troll. How you doing? Uh, I am Sonicos. I am one of the stock goons. For the last several years, we've been doing the troll. Uh, basically, since 26, we wanted to encourage the shenanigans. Uh, by the way, I am sorry for the clusterfuck from 26. Kind of. Are you? Yeah. yeah Are you? But am I really? <laughs> so three months ago, I had an idea. I reached out to Nikita, who reached out to DT. We had a conversation. I told him, hey, you know what? Let's try and make this thing real. So he said, okay, 
fuck it, let's go put the pool on the rooftop. And then I said, oh fuck, I actually have to do homework now. So three months ago, I started making my first badge, which is the black badge raffle badge that you've been seeing running around. So first and foremost, I want to thank a lot of people, my girlfriend, for helping me with the pick and place for the assembly. She kicked ass. It would not have happened without her help. Uh, scav hunt for a thousand different reasons. Seriously, you guys kick ass. Uh, the saw goons for helping me hand these things out. The info goons for telling you guys to fuck off. Uh, and not XORs, DC26 Bender Badge is where I stole most of the code that works. Uh, all of the code that works is from them, all the code that's broken is mine. Uh, DT, I, thank you for not kicking me out after 26. Um, and I preemptively thank you all for not fucking killing me when I walk off this stage. Uh, so, for all of you who have one of the DEF CON raffle tickets for this year, uh, enjoy your souvenir, you're not winning shit. So, uh, you know, I do too. So, so the way that I set this up, the entrance for this, these five humans had to give me the tickets from 26, 27, all three different colors from this year, a receipt from Scav Hunt requiring what, was it 10 points? Yep. And a single page, single spaced report on a topic of their choice printed and delivered to me directly because I wasn't open in any attachments. Uh, so, the entrance would hunt for beacons, hidden challenges, unlock flags for the badge. Each flag was going to get a roll of an int 16 dice on my badge. But in the vein of badge life, I fucked it up. Uh, the firmware was not complete. So, fuck it, we'll do it live with a D20. So, one, two, three, four, five. 17, uh, what's three off, uh, U, U-N. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit. So, thank you. Thank you again for putting up with me. Uh, follow DEF CON Raffle on Twitter and we'll see how we can keep the shenanigans going. Thanks everybody. <laughs> thank you. Right on, man. I want to thank all the departments that make this possible. If you look in the printed program, you can see the shout out. You can see the sheer number of goons that it takes to pull off a conference like this. It's almost 500. They're all organized into the different groups. There's about a thousand content creators, so about 1,500 people at least are necessary to give you the experience that you've had here. So let's see a round of applause for all the creators. Now, every year there's a sort of a cycle of goons that are retiring and new goons that come on. And if you've gooned for 10 years or more, you get what we call the gold badge. And the gold badge is like the black badge in the sense that you can continue to attend for life for free and we would like to call out those who are retiring this year. Sunshine, Bitmunk, Ahab, Redbeard, A. Killer Spud, Matrix, Salem, Karik, Lizzle, 33, Brazil, Scout, Riku, 83D, Dallas, Amlazar, Chosen One, and Crusader. Oh, and Stumper. Stumper's not added. Right on. So thank them for 10 years. Right on. Without all of their help and the help of all the goons, this would not be possible. So thank you. Now behind the goons, we have what we call the DCHQ. These are the uh, full-time year-round employees uh, that help try to coordinate everything. It's myself, Nikita, Janet, Neil, Will, Darrington, the other Jeff, um, and TCMBC. And this year I've got Nikita and Janet bolded because due to COVID and some other 
uh, situations, they really had to step up their game and they really, I mean, they're already doing great work, but I think Janet and Nikita really shown this year and I'd really like to thank them personally for their fantastic work. So thank you for all the DCHQ. So we're nearing the very end and I just want to call out for those of you who want to continue with some DEF CON action throughout the year. We have a lot of ways to engage with us online. And uh, over the last couple of years, our Reddit channel has really been taking off. So we've added it to the slide. Check out our slash our DEF CON Reddit. Um, we have mobile apps for both Android and Apple for the DEF CON forums. And we've really been trying to figure out post sort of DEF CON 29 uh, how to engage more online. Now, next year, right? Next year, DEF CON 31 will be back here. Registration is live. Put this date in your calendar. We're going to be here. We're not going anywhere. We're going to try to figure this place out. Now we've got um, some content coming online. I talked about some of the video. A lot of the videos and slides will all go online over the next couple of months. Follow our Twitter. We'll tell you all about it. Now, I would normally say thank you. That is it. But for the first time ever, 11 p.m. tonight in the chill out area, there's going to be an after party for those of us still around. And so for those of you who won't be around that long, we'd really like, um, to wish a happy birthday to someone who's been a long time contributor to DEF CON, El Cantaro. Let us sing happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday, El Cantaro. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. Okay, get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs>